felt like Salzburg could climb any mountain uh, at some stages in that second half. Uh, for people who didn't see the game live uh, with us, Graham, how much of a scare did Liverpool get tonight? A big one. I mean, it was a fab it was, if you were a neutral tonight watching that game of football, you'd be delighted. I mean, you saw Liverpool, some of their football in the first half was delightful. At 3 0, they think they're in their armchair. It just shows you at this level, you knock off, you lose the momentum. The opposition get a goal and all of a sudden, you know, you're, you become mm. the nervy one, even at 3-1. And you have to give great credit to Salzburg because we know, anyone who's, anyone who's played at Anfield knows, it's a very hard place to get a result. And on European nights, it's even possibly harder. So great credit to Salzburg. They dug in, they showed, we said at half-time enough quality, and they must be a, a really powerful and strong team in their own league. Because um, you can see individually they have, you know, Genuine, yeah. genuinely good players with, with a high technique. Um, got themselves back in the game. Maybe at that point a wee bit naive, you know, when they get back to 3-3, the way they conceded the, the winning goal. But they were very, very impressive tonight, Salzburg. Liverpool got away with one tonight. It was an extraordinary swing in momentum now because as, as you take us through Liverpool's first half goals, as, as Graham has touched on, some of the football was sensational at times. Yeah, like this is eight minutes in, but they'd own the eight minutes and it's just, look, I'm going to go at him, I'm going to run at such pace. It's brilliant from Manny, absolutely cars him up. Delightful touch, Firmino plays the one-two into the perfect space with the perfect amount of weight on the ball and the finish is easy and it, was, it happened so quick, it was just brilliant. And almost similarly, in his mindset, Robertson says the same thing. I'm going to go it. I'm going to see what develops. And you know what? I'm going to keep going now that I've played it inside. Henderson does really well with Salah. The ball goes out wide. Alexander puts it across and he keeps going. He keeps believing. That was Liverpool at their best. Just look at him leaving flares in his wake as he stays going. Now, a lot of fullbacks would have turned around and ran back out. But he goes, you know what? They're not picking me up. I'm going to get in front of this man. It might come across. It does. And that was them. They were playing with such confidence. And here again, there's more space for them. Like they're, the they're center, almost look at the centre well, half now. Yeah, they were. I'll out, just let you cross it. Yeah, they were out of it. They just couldn't cope. And then when it goes three 0 you feared for them, and you think this could yeah. be five six, and uh, then Liverpool switched off. You're mm -hmm. going to take us through um, how Salzburg got back into the game, and, and I want you to maybe break down how much of it was them showing character and saying, "Listen, we're better than what we've shown in that opening, what 40 minutes or so," and much of it was Liverpool dialing I mean, down again. This is a really good goal. I mean, he, he sits Van Dijk down, and this is a foul. Gomez fouls. The players go to sleep briefly. We'll see that when Aldam goes to sleep in the middle. But but again, this is at this high level. I mean, that's great technique. Give the goalkeeper no chance. Just watch Ronaldo in the middle of the pitch, beyond the referee here, circle him. He doesn't sense danger. You know, when the ball goes dead, the, the great Ronnie Moran that was my coach used to say, someone will go to sleep when the ball goes dead. Mm. That's a classic example. Again, when, when Mwapi gets the ball here, he's confronted with the defender, turns away. At this point now, Liverpool think the problem is solved. There's no danger. He quick reverse ball, get lucky, it goes between Van Dyke's legs, Haaland has a tap in. But when we show it from another angle, we'll see that Trent Alexander, both Trent Alexander, that we're going to see that angle, both Trent Alexander and Gomez, I think when, when Mappy is, is forced to turn away and go back towards his own goal, the Trent Alexander and Gomez in the centre of the pitch go to sleep and it's Cost a simple it. tap. Are, are Liverpool the markedly a lot less better defensively this season than, than they were? Or is there a, no, a noticeable no, deterioration no. defensively? Well, well, what's ha you've got to remember, Gomez played tonight. Now, Matip and, and Van Dijk have formed a great partnership, I feel. I think they've been really solid, they complement each other. Gomez coming in, he's still a young, a young man, Gomez, mm -hmm. in centre-half terms. Um, no, they'll be the same. I think tonight they were fabulous. And they, when you're a player and, and, it's, and you know you're playing well, you, you can maybe lose your concentration mm -hmm. a wee bit when you go 3-0 up. Mm -hmm. And it's a combination of a bit of that, but if we just spoke about that, it would be a discredit to Salzburg. Salzburg, we said at halftime, we knew that individually that they had strong, strong players. You know, when I say strong players, technique, their football wouldn't be as physically demanding as ours, They'd be allowed to express their technique a bit more than they would in the Premier League. But we knew technically they were very good and they showed a bit of grit and determination to get back into the game. They were not without quality, Salzburg. You must give them a great compliment, yeah. mm -hmm. given they're a very young team as well. And, and, and as Graham says, they were helped by, by Liverpool knocking off a bit in terms of being sloppy. But, but the stuff of champions being that when, when the game went back in the, in the melting pot, 
they got the winner. Yeah, but Sabazai takes a terrible touch on his tie there, and uh, Fabino smells it. You know, I think I'll get this. He just pokes in, puts it into an area. Just from the clearance here, at this point, why don't you just volley it away out? But he takes a terrible touch on his tie. That allows Fabino the chance to go in. Now, he helps it into a good area, but you know who's read it straight away. It's the man who wanted it most in that box. There was lots of shirts there that should have been able to get hold of him in the real world, but he's so quick for them and reads the situation so well. Mm. And what another <laughs> great little ball from Firmino you see again. See, when you see that goal, it's Salah who makes Firmino's mind up what he's got to do with the header. You know, he sees what great strikers do to anticipate the quicker up here yeah. now with the guy they're playing against who's marking them. When the ball's in the air, you know, Firmino, make no mistake, Firmino will see Salah out the corner of his eye making that run. So he's made up Firmino's mind for him. Just nod it back in there. And they have such telepathy, don't they, those guys? Yeah, uh, but the four stage. defenders are all looking at the ball, but he's, <laughs> not, he's gone. No, it's brilliant. Anticipation. Liverpool brilliant. off the mark.